The headlines in the news last week were full of billions and trillions of dollars. The one billion mark of tokenized treasuries has just been surpassed as BlackRock issues a tokenized uh, money market fund on Ethereum and the vision for $10 trillion of tokenized real world assets is on its way. For those that believe that tokenization is going to happen tomorrow and it is going to democratize and disintermediate markets and eliminate the fragmentation, I am here to bust all those myths. Stay with me. So what happened in reality? BlackRock launched a new money market fund. This is not a tokenized version of an existing money market fund. It's a new one. The tokenization is done in collaboration with Securitize. That's the tokenizing uh, platform. The fund is called Biddle. And, uh, you know, these acronyms, HODL and Biddle, maybe we will see more these. And for those that were impressed with the fresh name Biddle and didn't know this, that this is an institutional digital liquidity fund. The minimum investment is $5 million. And yes, it is impressive that within a week since it was long, it has accumulated what well, I think that the number is. It is 274 million. And there's less than a, a dozen of investors. There's two institutional investors holding around 50 million, another one 35 million, and then there's more 5 million investors, around four of them. Most importantly, Ondo Finance, which is a DeFi platform whose mission is to bring traditional investment vehicles into the decentralized world, into DeFi. How? By tokenizing traditional financial instruments like funds and then being able to bring them into DeFi, into liquidity pools. So Ondo Finance actually moved 95 million from its own token that was backed by short-term treasuries and an existing BlackRock fund, the BlackRock Fed Fund. That's a traditional fund. And why is it doing that? It's doing that because the Biddle token can settle instantly on Ethereum where it's uh, issued. So it can settle, you can redeem, you can subscribe 24-7, 365 days a year, whereas the Ondo Finance token, which is uh, OUSG, cannot settle instantly 24-7, 365 days because it's backed by a traditional BlackRock fund and other assets that don't trade 24-7. So about 40% of the under finance token that is not restricted as an institutional token, but has a minimum of 100,000 versus the 5 million, it has the middle token within its asset uh, bank backing. So here we are in a world that is more fragmented than ever. Biddle is on the Ethereum blockchain. The under finance token is on the Ethereum and the Polygon blockchain. Its asset backing is a mix of traditional securities like bank deposits, U.S. treasuries, a little bit of this traditional BlackRock fund, but most of it in this Biddle token. And then you're going to ask, so how does the Biddle fund that was just issued and is number two in terms of market capitalization, how does it compare to the Franklin Templeton 
tokenized fund that was issued back in 2021 and is the biggest one in terms of market cap right now. It's got about $360 million. So a couple of differences. First of all, the Franklin Templeton uh, Fund is issued under another uh, securities law, different than the Biddle one. The Biddle one is only for accredited investors under Rule 506C, issuance rule, whereas the Franklin Templeton Fund is issued under the 1940 Act Fund and is really a retail a financial instrument, so there's no restrictions to it. It is on Solana and Polygon and can only be purchased by the Franklin Templeton Benji app. So how do you buy that one? You can buy it with Fiat on that app. How do you buy the Biddle with stable coins on securitized platform? and it's running on Ethereum. How can you buy the on the finance tokenized fund? Because on the finance has more than one. Uh, you have to buy it with stablecoin also either on Ethereum or on Polygon. So you see the fragmentation that is created. It's a new kind of fragmentation. The other important fact is to acknowledge that the Biddle token that is definitely a step towards the right direction in the sense that this is a primary issuance and not wrapping an existing fund into a token. On the other hand, if you look at the number of parties that are involved, there's more than half a dozen parties involved. You have Securitize which is the tokenization platform and I think the placement agent. Then you have the custodian. Then you have the transfer agent. Then you have the investment platform. So this intermediation is kind of a joke in the sense of the number of entities that are involved in terms of increased access. I mean, Biddle is an institutional product. Institutions don't have a problem of access. So what is really the use of creating in the primary market these tokenized money-like tokens or security tokens that are backed by short-term investments and are offering a yield. It seems to me that this exercise has two possible use cases. One is this can appeal to treasuries of companies that are crypto native, like the Ethereum Foundation or other foundations that really do not want to go into fiat money. They don't want to park certain cash in stable coins because in this type of environment, they're not earning yield. So these fiddles of the world makes sense for them. The other reason is to find ways to take these products and move them or allow them to access DeFi protocols to be part of liquidity pools. So these are opening the doors, building bridges to liquidity pools. Whether there is demand for them, that is a market issue. It's much like we talk uh, about the fact that tokenization means liquidity. It does not mean. The analogy that I like to offer is Think of publicly listed stocks. The story is that when a stock is uh, listed, there is, whereas when it remains in the private market, 
there isn't liquidity. Yes, but think of what we call in traditional markets, small cap hep, which is when a company's stock is listed on a, a public market, but the capitalization is small, there isn't enough liquidity, and it's very difficult to escape from the so-called small cap hep. It's the same here. If something is tokenized, if an asset is financialized through tokenization and can enter liquidity pools, and in theory, anything can enter a liquidity pool, be it, be it a, a money market fund, a money-like token, as uh, would be characterized under the Mika digital assets framework or a security token, it doesn't matter, it can enter a liquidity, a DeFi liquidity pool, and uh, there, there can be value exchange with other assets, but the question is really whether that will happen. So we have more fragmentation than we ever had before. Why? Because these tokens are on, on different blockchains and chains don't talk to each other necessarily. So let me recap this myth exercise. One, the way tokenization is happening, we're introducing new fragmentation. Even if we're issuing tokenized securities on public blockchains, there's different layer one public blockchains. Some are on Ethereum, some are on Solana, some are on Stellar, some are on Polygon. Then some of these tokens are on private blockchains. Other tokens can be purchased with through these corporate apps, or others can be purchased with stable coins, but on different platforms, not necessarily open. You have to go to Securitize to buy this. Why? Because some of these tokens are whitelisted with different sort of classes of whitelisting. Some have a minimum requirement of 5 million. Some have a minimum requirement of 100 million and others are for retail. So this world is fragmented in new ways. Access, access is a joke because there isn't increased access because institutional is institutional and retail Retail, I mean, you're creating a different app. Yes, you might be fractionalizing, but you're introducing other types of accessibility issues, new apps, more options, more fragmentation. Think of it, even in the narrow category of money-like financial instruments, we are creating so much choice that there is no way we can be optimizing. So maybe we need another service, an extra new service to help us optimize between these choices. In terms of disintermediation, that is really a new kind of joke because in the case of securities that are especially under the SEC, there is no such thing as the Asian, because the number of intermediaries involved is the same. Having said that, there is the value of being able to buy or sell 24-7, 365 days, but that does not mean that the liquidity is there because liquidity is something that has to do with the market. So whether liquidity is provided through AMMs, automatic market makers, or human market makers, it doesn't matter, but liquidity is not something that is built in to a token product or an asset that sits on these new rails of blockchain. Yes, there is the potential for less friction, 
So in conclusion, this phase of innovation of moving capital markets onto new rails, these blockchains, is introducing new types of fragmentation. It does not mean that it is instant. And this notion of increased accessibility is also false, along with the disintermediation. Why? This is because everything is done under the current regulations and compliance laws. And therefore, tokenization under the current, especially U.S. laws, does not allow for increased access and increased disintermediation. Stay tuned.